Hey now, welcome in, man. Uh, did did the Barracuda win a game? What is, what is this weird word I'm seeing here that's shut out? What what? I'm not sure what what does that mean. Jerk, I'll have to explain that to me here in a minute. Let's go. Hey now, boys and girls, let me guess. Oh, I thought I had neglected to add the slide, but boom, there it is. Hey now. What up, everybody? AJ and Jerk coming at you here on a Sunday night again. It's the Pucknologist. We welcome you back to another episode of your only completely live, unfiltered, unedited, uncensored, commercial-free Sharks podcast, wrapping up your week of Sharks hockey, part of Teal Town, USA. As always, if it's your first time here, Hit the like and subscribe on the platform of your choice. And every episode of the Puck Now, just remember, we're doing our prize pack. Oh, jerk, Do we? Uh, did, did it turn out pretty well this week, or did it go down in flames? <laughs> well, uh, a second consecutive week of having a decent amount of entries, a decent amount of first-time entries as well. So, nice. uh, yeah, so when the time comes, I think we're all going to be in for a treat. Sweet, sweet, sweet. J11, you are uh, completely welcome for the Augie's recommendation. That is the place to go. That's honestly, you know, I swear, dude. Uh, so a buddy of mine has season tickets and he's right at concourse level 123. Sure. Right behind him is Bebo's and right above that is Augie's. And I'm like, how much you want to bet this dude was like, buying tickets not based on the view but how close it was to like the best food in the building i mean <laughs> i'm like 4d chess move dude i was gonna say there there's there's something to be said there because and you know this as a as a person who goes to the tank every now and again uh walking around there is not the easiest task at times oh, so and last night was one of those times yeah so being close to your uh preferred option for some grub is uh definitely the way to do it yeah dude last night it's dude saturday night budard big giveaway at the door like everything came together for a pack night and it was pretty damn packed last night and in that moment it reminded me it's like ah oh, yeah that's why i hate sellouts <laughs> 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 trying to navigate the sea of people Oof. I, I like it better when we're unpopular <laughs> <laughs> dude so much easier to get around all right let's go here um i mean dude keep losing baby i but i cannot wait for this season to be over dude worst season in 30 years i ran some numbers dude and last season sucked too finishing with just 22 points and 60 wins dude did you know <laughs> they would have to win half of their remaining 12 games to hit 22 wins right now. And when has this team played 500 hockey for a 12 game stretch? <laughs> yeah, no shit, huh? And to reach 60 <laughs> points, they'd have to win 10 of the remaining 12 games. <laughs> I think I'm going to hammer the under on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, so Pashelka calling this out and I I can't believe it, it like evaded me. I was usually I'm on top of this stuff, but scores by periods this week dude the sharks they outscored the other team in the first period four to two but in the second mm -hmm. they were outscored three to five and in the third outscored zero to nine <laughs> <laughs> dude i told you team cannot hold leads blew two of them this week well not only that dude but you know nine goals allowed in the third period and zero scored the 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 consideration there is you think about these three games this week right uh, it, it, it's not as if things sort of got squirrely at the end and the Sharks were allowing an empty netter or anything like that. You know, like, <laughs> these, were, these were nine third period goals that were against a goalie. Yeah, it's uh, just... Just unbelievable. And I'll tell you, you know, being there last night and sure. it's four to three and there's 90 seconds left. I'm sitting there going, they're, they're going to find a way. They will find a way to, to to send this to OT. And lo and behold, boom. And then 18 seconds in, I was just like, like you, 
could not, I did not get the script on last night's game, but I couldn't have done it any better. It was well, perfect. And, 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 you know, something that's kind of become the mantra around here lately, never in doubt. Oh, never. Not a t- <laughs> Dude, in fact, when it happened, when they tied it, that's exactly what I said in the moment. <laughs> I'm like, never in doubt. We did this. Oh, man. All right. It, 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 it's. It's in- interesting to me the the rate at which that is true. <laughs> so amazing, dude! Like if I had your betting app, dude, anytime a the, a team gets behind the sharks, if there's a way to bet that they'll come back and win, just do it. Well, and and you know how much money you would have won this year on that. Well, and it, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I, I I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to crunch the numbers on that because it it will it'll take a while, but. You know, and and if if this changes your opinion of me, so be it. But as soon as uh, as soon as that Blackhawks goal went in, I believe it was Seth Jones who tied the game. Um, as soon as it was four four, I threw some scratch on Chicago to win. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh hell yeah! And, and, that was and, Kurashev that got the tire. There you go. But and, but and Jones now, hit the hit the hit the uh, OT goal. Right. That's right. And now. Maybe the math would be counter to my own personal perception, but I feel like teams that squander a goal within the last two minutes of a game more often than not end up losing. <laughs> so, like, even take the Sharks out of it, right? Like, just the momentum swing, right? Yeah. I think is 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 notable. God. All right, so let's start at the beginning of the week. I mean, what th- th- this was a game that even Granlin called embarrassing following a loss, uh, an 8-2 loss at Nashville. Uh, the last time we saw Corona, when was the last time we saw three different goalies in a week? <laughs> <laughs> it has been a minute. Man. And then uh, and LeBanc and Barabanov scratched in favor of defenseman McDonald playing forward. That's where we're at now, people. <laughs> and the Sharks got off all of three shots in the third. Three shots. And 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 you know what's interesting about that? And I had told you this privately. I thought just all the all the science coming in on both sides of this matchup, I thought for sure the Sharks were gonna win this game. Like at the time. Oh, didn't you say that last week? You were kind of like trap game on this. Right. Well, <clears throat> at, at you go back at the time. Nashville 14 0 and 2 in their last or I'm sorry 12 0 and 2 in their last 14 and the Sharks had won once in their last 14 and so you kind of think like <laughs> dude you know, your like, law, these are two have, your law of, of averages has been pushed into the locker all season long yeah and and it's really like it's really shocking to me because <laughs> the there are you know there's statistical improbability and then there's this season Dude, as you said, no, you have a team one win in fourteen games versus a team with no losses in fourteen games, right? <laughs> like you would think that the 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 wins would blow the other way, and no. <laughs> and I mean, again, they go up two one and then allow seven straight, and it could have been ten two loss if it's not for reviews, right? <sighs> but you know, Granlin called it embarrassing and he's completely right although i thought it was funny he says we've been in every single game on this trip except tonight have you well i mean the game did start zero zero there's that and for the first 30 minutes it was great yeah <laughs> first 30 minutes tied two two and you're like all right probably better than usual and then boom, boom. There we go. And I will say, dude, Quinn with Quinn's had some doozies from the post games uh, when it comes to the quotes. Dude, mm-hmm. he goes, we know who we are. They get a power play goal and it changes momentum for them. We get a power play and we're lucky to not give up a shorty. Accurate. I mean, oh, uh, but Quinn on scratching Barabanov and LeBanc in this one, he said, I need more out of both of them. I need more out of a lot of guys right now. They're not alone. They just happen to sit tonight because I didn't love what I saw in Chicago. <sighs> well, uh, the Sharks, eventually they'll get an opportunity to try and make up that Chicago game. Am I right? 
Well, I'm, <laughs> I look at this and I sit there and I go, well, you know what? For you, Barabanov and LeBanc fans, uh, enjoy the, the next 12 games because that's all you got. Yeah, no kidding. So it is what it is. Krona ends up getting sent back down to the CUDA. Because they, you know, obviously want him to get some more minutes. And who gets mm-hmm. the shutout today? Mac and Yemi. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so Blackwood returns for the game versus Tampa. This would be a 4-1 loss. Um, and this, dude, tell me this wasn't some slapsticky shit off the hop. Because you get Paul with the silly-ass ref skate goal. Initially thought to go off the stanchion, but it goes off a, a goal, or the the skate of the ref. And at that point, I went, here we go. Right. Vasilevsky, 6-2-0 and with a 9-20 coming into nine career games versus San Jose. He finished this with a 9-55. And I'm surprised Duclair didn't just come in and like have a hat trick and be like, I'm out, bitches. I, I thought, so you talk about, you mentioned a few minutes ago, the law of averages, right? <laughs> like... There was zero doubt in my mind that Duclair was going to make an impact in this game. Not even, I mean, not even because he was on the Sharks and then got traded away. Like, take that out of it. But just how many times do you see a good player struggling on a crappy team and then they go to a good team and it's like, boom, they are, they're like a match. It's just bang, you know? It kind of reminds me of Barabanov coming to San Jose. Yeah. The only difference being the Sharks were terrible when he came here, but. It's a good point. I mean, yeah, it was still a match. It, you know, something happened, but doesn't it feels like though a lot of times? Well, like maybe you can't say all of that because uh, there's definitely been times where a player moved and like nothing really happened. But it does seem like more often than not, uh, when it comes to upper, you know, top six players, mm-hmm. it does seem like a change of scenery. All of a sudden, they do kind of have a honeymoon period where they're just blowing up. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's almost like, especially being in a not good team and then you go somewhere else, kind of just the, it's sort of like the new, the new school kind of vibe, like first day of school where it's like, oh yeah, like new environment, you know, I'm, I'm going to the freaking playoffs, you know, like, mm. well, it's, it's, you used to uh, have that line that, you know, what do you got their numbers? I, I would right. feel like declares like, whoa, what do we got here? Talent? Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, he's been thrown right onto the top line, dude. Like, no questions asked. Uh, yeah. Dig it. Uh, notable from the Tampa game. Like, dude, we haven't mentioned the the broadcast crew in a long time. And, dude, on the TV broadcast, I there was a lot of complaining about no calls. I hadn't heard that in a while. I thought maybe they had put that to bed. But I did hear, you know, it, when I, like, take the time to write it down, <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely been a lot of, like, complaints. And it's just kind of like, we're in, we're we're not even in the back nine. We're you know on the back three here. Who gives a shit at this point? Right. But I will say, nice response from Eklund after being demoted. Uh, would have also have liked to have seen those responses from Barbie and LeBanc, of course, too. But uh, then Pashelka points out, Sharks have been outscored seventeen to one in the third period over their last seven games. <laughs> 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 and then you got a four point night for Kucherov. Uh, but dude, we, or I think it was me, didn't I have Eklund as my zero last week? And bro, zero bump worked. It did. <laughs> it, it finally, I mean, after how many weeks of putting him there, and he finally woke up. Oh, man. Dude. It only really took him long enough, but. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then, and a great moment of irony it was noted uh Zetterlin can become the youngest shark player to score 20 goals in a season since Timo Meyer. <laughs> love it love it when irony pops its head every once in a while so anywho we move on to uh last night's game Cooley with his uh start again second start first at SAP and I gotta say I was uh I was digging this kid just based on his reaction. I don't know if they showed it on TV, but last night they um, had like a, I don't know, a peewee team or something. I'm not sure why they were there, but you know, you see that from time to time that they go out there and stand next to a player during the, uh, the anthem. Oh, yeah. It was for the youth player that had passed away. 
Oh, okay. And so, and they did do a moment of silence, and mm-hmm. Cooley had two goalies next to him, and Cooley, you know, like took a knee during mm-hmm. that moment of silence, and like nudged both of the the kids and was like, "Hey, show some respect." Sure. And, and I was like, "Hey, but, you know, respect." I like I thought that was cool. Teach the younging, you know, the younglings, uh, what it means to you know respect your team. I just, I thought that was a cool move. I don't know that a lot of people noticed that, but to me, I was like solid. And then, then the anthem started and I went, Oh God, we got another who thinks it's an AGT audition. <laughs> I'm sorry. The verbal gymnastics, leave that for TV, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get the game is televised, but you know what I mean? Like leave that for uh, talent shows. Time and a place. Yeah. I'm telling you, but uh, hey, last night, dude, your boy, Zetterlin, three-point night, two goals. Bordalo, two goals. And at that point, 90 seconds into the second period, you're like, holy crap, all right, they're, they're going to somehow fuck this up because you want them to lose to, of all teams, Chicago, since that's who they're uh, you know battling for to occupy the cellar. Mm-hmm. And you think, you know, 90 seconds into the second, you're like, well, you know, you know, and at that point you're almost resigned to it. You're like, you know, good for them. They deserve one out of the last 15, you know? <laughs> and then what happened? <laughs> it's yeah. just like, good Lord. And it was pointed out, uh, including postseason, a total of 2,749 games. Last night was the first time in franchise history. The Sharks led by as many as four goals in a game and lost. Uh, but jerk, it's a four goal game that was never in doubt. Never in doubt. And I believe if my math is correct, how many more four goal games do I need? Two, I believe. One. One. Even better, dude. And we got a lot of racetrack left. Twelve twelve games left. Now, granted, not all of them are at home. Um according to my math. Seven home seven home games. Yeah. One four goal outing in the next seven home games, like I'm not worried. All right, but now, I'm just letting you know. Dallas, should I be worried? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, Dallas, good luck, especially if, if Otter's on his game and he starts. Se- yeah. Seattle. Mm, I can see Seattle. I said maybe, because the games between San Jose and Seattle have been a little odd. There, There's no middle ground against the Kraken. It's either 2-1 or it's 6-5. There's yeah, no middle. Exactly. So, And in fact, wasn't that the – that was – a game, I want to say December, that up in Seattle that Quinn called completely embarrassing. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that rolls. Uh, L.A., good luck. Now, St. Louis, it depends. You know, do you get pissed off, you know, bitch, bitch binner? Or do you get, you know, like a solid goaltender that hasn't lost his mind? <laughs> um Arizona. Now, I think it could be Arizona, and here's why. Because that's a Pucknologist takeover. (laughs) (laughs) It would just line up perfectly. It really would. Right? Then you got Calgary and Minnesota, both of which I don't think the Sharks. Those tend to be low-scoring games. So yeah, but you know what? You, you know, every dog has their day, man. Like, but wouldn't it? It come on. It would be kind of funny if like it just ha- like we you set the over under at six and a half, and it it hit six. Like, right. Oh, that'd be great. It, now you're just like every home game. You're just like, come oh, dude, on, uh, stop, stop, <laughs> stop. Dude, I'm sweating it. <laughs> oh. All right. So, um, dude, since the all-star break, the Sharks are two, 14 and three, uh, since their last win over Ottawa on March 9th, Oh, six and one. Huge. Yeah. This is, I, I mean, I don't know how many times we have to say it. People right where we want them. <laughs> right where we fucking want him. It's I'm Berg already starting it in the chat, dude. Celebrini. It, it's it's I I've kind of I'm surprised that chant didn't break out last night to be honest. Yeah, no kidding. I I was surprised that and you know, I'll I'll freely admit I I don't watch a lot of the uh home broadcast if you catch my vibe. Um, but I happened to be uh, for last night's game, or was it last night, or mm, or was it against the Lightning? I think it might have been against the Lightning, actually. 
And they very briefly coming out of commercial did a little thing like, oh, Will Smith doing things. Mm -hmm. Macklin Celebrini. Uh, many people are saying he could be number one overall, which the Sharks would have interested in, perhaps. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, wait a minute. Because I thought the marching orders was that they were going to make the playoffs. So what, <laughs> what, what's changed? Dude. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So an article. Oh, this is fun. An article came out Monday. Uh, a Russian scout got a Spanish archer from Greer because I guess mm -hmm. dude was like lazy, not doing his, his job. Yeah, you know what's really unfortunate about that? I'm like, you, is, you follow the K, what's up? Well, what's really unfortunate about that is the person they fired, which is uh, uh, Igor Aranko, that's who they fired. Um, he was like he was like a media guy, like reporter for the longest time and super knowledgeable like about the inner workings of that league and the culture over there and everything. So like if you're looking for a Russian scout, like there are, you know, there are very few better options, right? And so to hear how things kind of ended for him and in that fashion, it, it's it's disappointing considering, like, this is a guy who's very knowledgeable and has put out good work previously. And also the fact that you don't really see uh, many, like, public firings that are this pointed. You know, uh -huh. you, usually it's, oh, we, we've mutually agreed to part ways, or, um, you know, we felt it was best for both parts. You know, something real nice and polished. And with, with this, it's like, yeah, the motherfucker didn't do work. You know? like, <laughs> True. No, that was that was de definitely like letting the rest of the league know. Yeah, off the top rope with it. Food. Oh, man. Oh, a couple of good ones in the uh, chat here. Oh, first one. Whenever you use a super chat, go right to the front of the line. Falcon Strike 21. Did you watch Will Smith in the NCAA tourney? I did not. <laughs> I heard great things. I saw highlights, but I didn't actually get a, the opportunity to watch the tourney. It's pretty exciting that uh, the Sharks have... I mean, it, it's not uncommon for the Sharks to have a prospect that is kind of in people's conversation. You know, every now and again it comes up. Mm -hmm. But the fact that the Sharks, and I think Jules pointed this out on Twitter, the fact that the Sharks have three prospects that everybody is kind of like really hyped about Oh, dude, people going you know, it, off about Smith and Musty. Smith, Musty, yeah, like, it's just, it's, you know, there's a lot of commentary, and then we'll get into it, but, like, there's a lot of commentary about where the Sharks are at in their rebuild and their prospect covered and all this kind of stuff, and, you know, I don't think I'm speaking out of school if I say it's the, you know, it's the best it's been, you know, in terms of potential high-end talent, like, maybe ever, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it, it's about fucking time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be no quite kidding. honest uh jesse in the chat saying i've said it before say it again sooner you accept the sharks aren't getting celebrini the easier your life will become hey i'm i can't i cannot predict the future uh well but, that, actually i shouldn't say that because i there were i had receipts that i had predicted like in december of last season that bedard was going to chicago confirmed based on shit that was happening. That was hella, hella quick. I think the Sharks have a damn good shot at getting celebrated. It's, again, it's well, the... Well, I mean, I, if, they, if they finish where they're at, they literally have the best shot. Yeah. And <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, it just, I feel like the pendulum might finally be, be swinging the other way. Like, it, it's going to be one of those things where... You know what? The sharks are going to get Celebrini. The problem is, is Celebrini is gonna is gonna be a bust. <laughs> like, now that would be so sharks. I just, I mean, I, I I think it it's been well stated. Like, bet you know whether you're, like, whether you have the best odds or the worst odds. Like at the end of the day, your odds are not a hundred percent, right? And so I think anybody who's operating with the idea of like, oh, we need to finish in last and then we'll get it. It's like, well, no, like that's not how, that's just not how things work. So like, I think anybody who's like overly bullish and it's like, yeah, we're going to get Celebrini. We just got to finish last. It's like, well, let's hold on a second. But also I think the folks who are like, oh, um, it's the Sharks, So when we are not going to have anything nice, like I kind of think you have to get over yourself a little bit. Yeah, no, I feel you. Let's... Just be along. Just, something like this, it's literally out of everybody's control. Just be along for the ride. Yeah, 
um, you know, I, I'm this is the one thing I'm kind of optimistic about. Like, I have hope for this. Now, that said, if the Sharks don't get the number one pick, if they somehow get screwed out of that, mm -hmm. uh, if 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 they finish 32nd and don't get the number one pick, um, I'm just saying I may like take the season off in protest. Well, to the I to mean, the from, point from the podcast. <laughs> well, and the thing is though, like, like even if that does happen, like Jules, Mark, Ian, Kevin, all those guys have been on record. Like, say that happens, which I think we'd all agree is the worst case scenario. The Sharks are gonna get a quality player. Yeah, at two, at three, whatever it is, you know. And we still haven't talked about the Pittsburgh pick. So right. you know, there are some pieces. Bozo, or the New Jersey pick when they go on a crazy run and make it to the Eastern <laughs> Conference Final, right? Oh, that only could happen. <laughs> uh, Bozo with Spanish Archer. Haven't heard that euphemism before. Dude, El Bo, if you get the meaning. That is a Spanish Archer. I can't believe you haven't heard that. We've used that term several times on here. Especially because Bozosaurus is a regular listener. Right? Uh, so Isn't Bozo in the Discord too? I don't know about that. I may be conflating with Berg. I'm not sure. All right. Uh, but with the uh, the one thing about the the whole Russian dude, get the the scout getting the Spanish archer, El Bo, mm -hmm. uh, dude, there was an article that came out that I swear to God was one of the most plagiarism-filled articles I've ever seen in my life. It was almost like a copy-paste. And dude, uh, like reading it, I'm going, are you serious with this? And I was thinking... You know, what if we, you and I, just put together a show that all we did was we would sit there and like play 32 thoughts. And then, like, at the end of like every fourth sentence, we would just stop and then we would discuss what they just talked about and then played the rest <laughs> and just kept doing that. <laughs> Cause that's what I, that's what this felt like. It's like, God, would that be okay to do? Probably not. All right. Uh, of course, when it comes to podcasts, the viral moment that uh, I found out about a new podcast that I'd never heard about, and uh, I'm still not sure what the hell the name of it is, but I know Pierre Maguire was featured on it, and it's some, I think it came from somewhere in Boston? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I forgot that Pierre Maguire was a person that yeah, dude, like, existed. Like that was easily for me, like one of the best things about hockey moving from NBC mm -hmm. that Maguire wasn't part of that thing. Um, but his, Maguire's basic quote, paraphrasing, the rebuild in San Jose is not being done properly. Okay, fine. That's more than fine. Everybody's entitled to their, to their opinion. But a few things popped into my head. First off, okay, then w w what is not, like, be specific. And he wasn't. And it's real easy to, you know, lob tomato from the back row. Mm -hmm. But he offered no solutions. And take into account, this is the same dude who said that Carlson's contract was immovable. That's the Eric Carlson that's now playing in Pittsburgh. And uh, it should also be noted that there's an entire line of shirts in Chachki with the phrase "Shut up, Pierre" on it. And let's well, be honest: if Pi yeah. if if Pierre Maguire was so fucking great, he'd be with the team. He wouldn't be a, a talking head. Well, here's the but here's the thing though: is I wouldn't even say that he's a talking head because so. First of all, that that quote that he made, the Sharks are not doing their rebuild properly. I think if you played that clip for me and you said, hey, what do you think of this clip from 2021, 2022? <laughs> I might be like, yeah, you know what? All right, yeah, maybe he's on to something here. But the fact that that clip was from whatever it was a week ago. Yeah, it's it, like, dude, Mike Greer has has had one draft and what he, he got with the team like what, a week beforehand? Right. Not like everything that. had already been done, but all the work, all the, let's be honest, dude, all the, the choices that were made at that draft, Micro wasn't involved in any of that. Right. Not only, I mean, yeah. I mean, you think back to it, basically like if I'm like, <laughs> it was from what I understand, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, you know, we're going to do this draft that the old guard did. And then how, like Doug Wilson Jr. was relieved, like not soon after that draft. Right. Oh yeah. He gone. And but here's the other thing. I I don't know that I you know there are certain people when they talk and you say okay what like I'm gonna base this on your previous body of work or previous things <clears throat> that you've talked about and so 
I when as soon as I saw Pierre McGuire was making commentary, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot he was a person. What did he say? <laughs> and then I listened to what he said, and I'm like, okay, I don't know that I would be taking the words of a person who was fired as a head coach for tampering and fired as a vice president of player development after uh, 10 months <laughs> as somebody who's an authority that's, on that's what I'm saying. anything. He was, again, good, look it up. F- was the Hartford Whalers head coach fired for tampering and just being a bad coach? Uh, the captain of the Whalers said it was the best thing that could have ever happened to, Whal- to them, him getting <laughs> fired. And then... In July 2021, he was hired as the senior vice president of player development for Ottawa and fired in May of 2022. Now, what does that tell you? Well, especially because when you're in a rebuild like the Ottawa Senators are, you're not usually firing people unless you're in the next phase or the next era of your plan. But he was there for 10 months. (sighs) So, like, there's just certain people, you know, it's always like, you know, any kind of any sort of social science, you know, it's like, okay, check, you know, verify the source, check the source. It's like, okay, I'm reading, you know, I'm reading an article about, um, whatever the effects of sunlight on whatever children. Um, okay. Is this a scientist who wrote this article? That's, you know, kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. I'm Felix pointing out, I got the podcast is evidently called the sick podcast, the eye test. How embarrassing to be a co-host of a podcast and not have a microphone. (laughs) Oh, man. And J11 pointing out that Pierre goes on a ton of Ottawa and Montreal pods. Okay, well, good for him. And you know what? He he could contact us and be like, boys, let me come on your podcast and explain what I meant. I'd be like, no, we're good. We're cool. (laughs) Yeah, why would we want to ruin ourselves? (laughs) Either way, though, it's just, again, those who can do. Those who can't uh, get fired shouldn't. by teams. Yeah. <laughs> those who can do, those who can't, shouldn't. <laughs> so uh, how are those Penguins doing, by the way? Well, it's Pick Watch 2024, and right now, uh, at last look, oh, oh, um, both points and percentage, they were ninth. As we all know, that pick is top 10 protected. However... It has been confirmed. We talked about this a little last week, but uh, it was, can the Pens say, look, we protected it, yes, but we're going to let you have it anyway because we think we're going to do worse next season. So the Sharks could very well, you know, maybe they have the number one pick and... Say at this point, number nine, dude. I mean, dude, dude, two picks in the top ten, or yeah. say that th- that the Sharks, for whatever reason, get fucked and they end up with number two and number nine. Who's to say they don't cobble those both together and say, "Look, we really want this junior shark. Here's two and yeah. nine. Right. But, but, dude, don't tell me that the Pierre Maguire of the world won't shit all over Mike for doing that. Yeah. Uh, but it is but also that's the, but that's the thing. Like if it was a you know, if the shoe was on the other foot, if it's like a, a Pitts a Pittsburgh, a Toronto, uh, a Tampa Bay, you know, one of these more like a Colorado, right? One of these teams that's one that's, you know, done something notable lately. So it's like, oh, you know, that general manager is a real shrewd shrewd player, you know, like a real shrewd maneuverer. Um so I don't know. I, I I know there's there's been a lot of dialogue on you know the Penguins may trans for the pick even if it is in the top ten and you know I think we kind of touched on it last week. I'm not convinced the Penguins will be worse last year than they were this year. I'm just not convinced of it. And that's not to you say mean worse that they, next year. You mean? That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Okay. And that's not to say that it's impossible that they will be worse next year. But similar to the Sharks from two, three, four years ago. When you're locked into the core, you have to go for it every year, whether or not you should. Yeah. I mean, is it uh, last I look, Crosby's not having a horrible season. He's having like one of his best seasons ever. Yeah. So it just makes you wonder like, okay, so Crosby does Crosby things. You keep him for another year. They, I believe they still have Malkin signed for one more year. Uh, more. Oh, geez. 
Um, yeah, they've got him. I think they have Malkin. I believe it's. I'm going to check right now. I believe it's three years after this year. And I love the fact that they two. Sorry, they do everything they did to get Carlson, and the team got remarkably worse. And he's not even through the first season. They're already talk. There's already talk about moving Carlson back to Ottawa. Well, not only that, but <clears throat> so a team swinging for the fences on Eric Carlson and then falling out of the playoffs. We we've heard we've heard that story I'm before. Like, why does that sound so familiar? But you know what else is familiar about it? Do you happen to know who's on like the who's one of the advisory executives for the Penguins? I want to say his name is Doug Wilson. You would be correct. <laughs> <laughs> good lord i mean th- not dude, this is con- not saying it's connected it's just in it's just interesting <laughs> dude eric carlson is the gift that keeps giving <laughs> I'm telling sure. you this is just amazing so with that um you know that's something obviously we're going to be keeping an eye on as you heard earlier jerk definitely is giving uh new jersey the old horse eye see how that works out yeah, I'm not optimistic. They're <coughs> brutal this year. I mean, they won today, but you know, like at what cost, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we get into wild card watch, which has been quite interesting. Uh, I think they said Hurdle is could be back this week. It's funny that you say that because Vegas literally moved him to LTIR today. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? God, I had heard that he was like on <laughs> that he was like looking to come back. Like, well, so uh, Aiden Hill got injured last night, and so they had to call up uh, Yuri Patera from the Silver Knights. Oh, and they had no room for him. So. Yeah, I was gonna say. Wow. Okay, so that makes things even more interesting. I'm in, you know, like how long could Hill potentially be out? Are they gonna need that space? Because, dude, the schedule does not help. And they should be very thankful that Minnesota and St. Louis seemingly can't get it together because they have had opportunities and have shit the bed. But it's a huge week for Vegas. They, it really is. Like they're they're kind of on the ropes. Would you not say, dude? I mean, they've. <laughs> it's such a big week. St. Louis tomorrow. Who and it's for those of you who don't know. Go check the numbers. St. Louis and Mini are nipping at their heels for that second wild card spot. Yeah, Vegas Vegas is at 83, St. Louis 79, Minnesota 77. Uh, and uh, any games in hand for anybody? Uh, so Vegas does have a game in hand on both of them, which is in their favor. But we've seen numerous times that that really doesn't matter. I mean, you know, if you go on a losing streak, it doesn't matter how many extra games you have. Yeah, I was going to say it only matters if you win that one. But at St. Louis tomorrow, then at Nashville the following night. Who's the team immediately ahead of them? Yeah, right. And huge. They're on the ropes, dude. That like they'll probably end up making the playoffs, but they're seriously on the ropes oh, right now. Bite your tongue, uh, <laughs> dude. Then the Jets on Thursday. Last time I uh, looked, uh, team battling for playoff position in their division, battling for the number one seed in the Central. Hey now, then Minnesota on Saturday. The other team nipped in at your heels. Then the next six games they play, Vancouver. Uh, last I looked, best team in the NHL per record. Mm-hmm. Okay, Arizona, sure, should be a walk. But then Vancouver again. <laughs> then Edmonton, one of the best teams in the West. Then Minnesota again, nipping at your heels. And if you know if they lose that first one in Minnesota, you can bet that Minnesota's going to be like, okay, we can beat these guys twice in a week or two weeks, whatever. And then Colorado. And then I think they got like a couple, like their last two games are like Anaheim and, you know, Montreal or, or Ottawa. So I know the last two games are like also Rams, but by then they could be in, they could be out. Yeah. You know, the magic number could be reached. I'm I'm kind of wondering, you know, Puck Guy is usually on that. Puck Guy, I haven't seen him like push the magic number yet for the uh, Sharks to have the best odds in the, in the, get on that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so for uh, it either way so we know that san jose uh, it is what it is let's get celebrating but hey let's it wouldn't it be great to see vegas w- okay it sucked to watch them have you know win the cup in six years but at least it would be a nice thing to see them after winning the cup 
miss the playoffs and miss it by the skin of a, of their teeth, you know, by a couple points. That'd be very cool. I would enjoy that immensely. <laughs> it's the little things, people, is what I'm saying. <laughs> so when the and when the Sharks had 19 games left, I set the OU for four and a half and was hammering me under. Then I reset it for three and a half. 12 games left. Oh, dude, I, I think I'd hammer two and a half on the under. <laughs> I mean, 12 games left, dude. One is a sub-500 team in Arizona, and you have two against Seattle. Last I looked was a 500 team. Right. So, ay, ay, ay. Um, I guess the, the all we can say now is who are you mo- more juiced to, like, hear about learn about smith musty someone else because it's really all we have to look forward to over the next month i'm i'm maybe i wouldn't i don't know that i would say juice but i am interested musty i'm very interested in because i i look at what he's done uh this season um with sudbury and which is 102 points in 53 games which is very good and I just think about the fact that next year, you know, if he doesn't make the NHL, he'll have to go back to the OHL. And I'm just kind of like, you know, I feel like, I feel like he's done everything there is to do in the OHL. And that's not to say that he should be in the NHL. That's not what I'm saying, but it does make me kind of wish that there could be like a special circumstances petition uh, for players who are not technically AHL eligible, but you like want to petition for AHL eligibility, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do think unless Mike Greer signs a bunch of randos to like one, two, three year deals again, which I don't I do, put past him. No, I it wouldn't shock me whatsoever. I do think Quentin Musty will barring a catastrophe. I think he'll start the season with the sharks and kind of get those nine, that nine game audition. And then, basically go from there but kind of the the Eklund season yeah but I I really wish he could go to the AHL because I feel like he's kind of done with the OHL or at least he should be done with the OHL oh man I mean at least there's you know it's like at least we have that we have something to there is something to be excited about yeah yeah like how many times had we brought that up where there didn't seem to be a roadmap or a light mm-hmm. at the end of the tunnel. And I feel like, right. it, and clearly Pierre still is there. <laughs> but I, <laughs> you know, it's like, I see like there will be some talent coming in. And you can go look at Cap Friendly. Like, it's pretty clear that it's hurry up and wait. You have to ripen the the youth that is coming up. And it's going to take a little bit of time. But man, can you imagine, you know, when these guys ripen... If their expectations are hit, this could be a really fun team to watch in three years. Yeah. (laughs) It's just that you have to wait three years. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hero in zero for the week. Uh, Look, I mean, Eklund, he got the zero bump last week. I'm giving him the hero bump this week, dude. Uh, A zero last week, demoted moved to the wing and he, you know, put up a goal and an assist over three games, uh, a zero on the plus minus with a hundred percent shooting percentage. You're like, Hey, uh, do you think that it's been a little bit of the hurdle thing where if you go back and, and look like it felt like hurdle was tried at center, like maybe rushed there a little bit. And then they said, okay, he's not ready for that. And then they put him back to wing for, good part of the season and then they brought him back to center you think that's kind of like the same thing that needs to happen with Eklund yeah I I do think so I I I think it's important to obviously try it out and see what happens but also be patient you know and and you kind of touched on it a few minutes ago the the timeline for the Sharks to be exciting and interesting right and so based on that fact I don't think um I don't think that because he didn't work out at center after a brief audition. I don't know that it's like worth freaking out over. Cause like you said, when hurdle started at center with the sharks, he was brutal and eventually morphed into like the sharks best face off guy. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where you just have to give it time. 
all that said, I, I think it's obvious that as things stand right now, he's better suited as a winger just because he can contribute to the team, like on the score sheet and feel confidence in his abilities and all those kinds of things. So I think if that is the, if center is the eventual position for him, like you got to sort of baby into it a little bit. Well then who would be your hero for this week? It's kind of hard not to go with Thomas Bordalo, right? I mean, easily been the most, at least the last maybe two weeks or two and a half weeks, however it's been since he's gotten called up. He's easily been the most exciting player on the Sharks, I think. Um, you know, I, he's got six goals on the season, which in 15 games is pretty impressive. And uh, for reference, he's got uh, more goals than Nico Sturm, Alexander Barabanov, Kevin LeBanc. You know, you see you see where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> um, so I just getting new blood in the lineup and making an immediate impact is obviously exciting, but also for it to be somebody that is on the younger side. I mean, he is uh, 21 years old and he's somebody that you're hoping can be a fixture of your team for the future. Like that's the right guy that you want to be making an impact and turn in head. So I'm going to go with Bordalo. just yes, this week specifically, he had the two goals last night, but since he's been called up, I, I think he's been the most exciting player. And it seems like he's he's starting to get it a little more. Yeah, well, and and I think we talked about it a couple weeks ago where the Sharks have started someone in the NHL. They haven't really worked out. They go back to the Barracuda or the Worcester Sharks or whoever. And then when they come back up, they're a completely different player. Like, we've seen it time and time again. Got to gotta love it. Chloe, Falcon Strike, everybody calling out Cl- Clem Shady. Clem Shady, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, zero for the week. Uh, I'm, I gotta go Thrun only because he basically called himself a zero for the week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like, yeah, self-admittingly, I, I've not, I'm not doing good. So, I mean, no points dash six on the week. It's just, uh, that's another, at least he knows, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, at least there's some self-awareness there. Um, God, I hope this kid can, I mean, it only costs the sharks a, a third and he's had moments. And again, I do kind of wonder if we can see better play from cats like Ferraro or Thrun once they're put in the position they should be rather than being elevated simply because of the lack of talent on this team right now on the blue line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. uh, Who's your zero then? So mine is kind of like a, a sort of a generic kind of blanket statement. Uh, My zero is the whole Sharks uh, on ice team just in terms of of their defensive play because we've now seen, unfortunately, twice in six days the Sharks have played poor defensively and allowed the Chicago Blackhawks, who are terrible, (laughs) steal a win from the hometown kid. Oh, man. Twice in six days. Yeah. Yeah. So the Sharks' like defensive structure as a whole gets my zero. Do you think we'll uh, we'll see any changes behind the bench over this season, either on the Cuda or the Sharks, for that matter? Hopefully the Barracuda, but I mean, we won't know until it ends. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, um, just something I thought would be kind of fun. Um, just again because it's kind of a a week that was. Meh, you know, let's be honest, dude. It was <laughs> right where we want them. Never in doubt. They were going to lose every game. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of like, you know, maybe there's some dark horses for the awards for the the end of the season. Sure. So like, I don't know who it seems like uh, who's the isn't there a cat in, in Tampa that's running away with something? <laughs> Yeah, Nikita Kucherov. Uh, he's, I mean, he's not running away with the Art Ross, but he's in first in the league in scoring. He's got, now get ready for this, he's got 123 points in 69 games, um, <laughs> which is incredible. Um, you know, spoiler alert, he is my pick for the Hart Trophy this year. Um, but the thing is, like, as good as he is this season, 
Uh, Nathan McKinnon is not that far behind him. Nathan McKinnon's got 122 points in 71 games. So, I mean, it feels like McKinnon's doing that quietly. Well, it's, you know, so here's something interesting. So up to this point, the Colorado Avalanche, they've played uh, 34 games at home this year. He's got at least a point in every home game this year. Jesus Christ. Right, which is like, it's the second best home point streak ever. And I think Gretzky has the record at like 40, I think. So, you know, again, I, I think I'm, not, I'm, he, I'm surprised I'm not hearing more about that, you know? Right. Well, and I think like it, this, it, this will never happen, but I think like if there was a way, if, if there was a way where like McKinnon and Kucherov could somehow both win the Hart trophy, like to me, that's like the fairest outcome because like, whoever wins will have earned and deserved it. But whoever loses between those two, like will have seriously lost out. You know what I mean? And is that his, uh, like McDavid won like the last five in a row or something? <laughs> Not that many, but he's, I think he's won the heart trophy. I want to say three times, but he's right up there in the conversation too. Like he's going to get some third. He'll, he'll probably be third place. Honestly, if I had to <laughs> handicap it. Well, and you know, there's always a hero. There is, you know, somebody might say Austin Matthews is their first first place vote, which, you know, he's definitely in that conversation, but I wouldn't say first place. Dude, I will guarantee you somebody will pick him number one. <laughs> he's going to get number one vote from one guy. One I mean, guy, I mean, fucking guy, fanboys. I mean, he's on pace for, oh gosh, how many goals? He's on pace for 69 goals this year, which is nuts, nice, you know, but like. I don't know. I think I think I just think it's a good commentary on where the NHL is at, where you have like so many like legit awesome players right now. Like it's a good time to become a new fan, you know. What about the uh, the Norris? I mean, is this you know a dogfight between Quinn Hughes and Kale McCarr, or you y know? Y yeah, I mean, honestly, it between those two, I think it kind of just depends on depends on how you feel in the moment, honestly. Because same same thing as. Uh, the same thing as the Hart Trophy, where between those two guys that you just mentioned, like whoever wins will have earned it, and whoever loses will have been robbed. You know, mm. so, so it's kind of like it's unfair either way. I mean, I think people would probably defer more to Quinn Hughes just because of how well Vancouver's doing in the standings, but that one is going to be very, very close as well. I have no doubt in my mind. Did didn't Kale McCarr like miss some time though this season? I don't think he missed a substantial amount of time, but I believe he did miss a handful of games, maybe, yeah. th maybe three or, uh, maybe five. Okay. Um, so for some reason I thought he had missed like 10 or 12, but anyway, uh, man. All right. I mean, uh, dude, the, the Calder is automatically going to Bedard. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to argue against that, but I do think you're going to have some people who, who, who really think about that. Um, you know, I, I, it would not at all surprise me if there were some people who were kind of on the Brock Faber hype train. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely think you're right though. Like Bedard will probably get it. And then it wouldn't surprise me. Like Brock Faber will probably be number two. All right. Um, dude, the Vesna. I know this is like one of your favorites. Oh, I mean, goalies are just so weird, right? <laughs> I, That's that might be the wide, most wide open one, honestly. I uh, if I'm if I'm putting money on it, I I swear, dude, I I think I gotta go go Hellebuck. Yeah, that's that was gonna be my pick is 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 Connor Hellebuck. I mean, there's a a, a substantial amount of goalies who could be in that conversation around him, right? Like I think. You know, you could convincingly say Sergei Bobrovsky. You could say Thatcher Demko. You could say Jeremy Swayman, right? But I do think it is Hellebuck's to lose. So I guess we'll see, right? Yeah. And in the chat, dude, Roman Yossi getting a lot of love for the uh, Norris. I, I think he'll be in the conversation. I just don't see him placing top three. See, I could picture him placing Maybe third. third. Yeah. 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 I mean, he is over point per game. Um, which is impressive on a team as shitty as Nashville in terms of offense. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the, would it would it blow your mind to know that of <laughs> okay the top three goalies and goals against Bobrovsky, of course, Hellebuck, yep, and then Talbot. 
You, even with Talbot, I kind of go, really? But, dude, number four on the <laughs> list is Jonathan Quick. <laughs> he's he's had a resurgence in, in New York, dude. He got an extension out of that. Dude, but that's what I'm saying. I'm like, hold, I'm like more better than Demko, better than Swayman, better than Shesterkin? You know what's crazy to me? <laughs> like, it, it, what's crazy to me, like, um, you know, like the 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 level to which the level to which certain players will go to be in a good situation. Like, remember, um, I remember last year when L.A. flipped quick to Columbus uh, and you know, <laughs> for like 10 seconds. Right. And, and yeah, he ended up on Vegas. But when he was on Columbus, like there were a handful of people who were like, oh, you know, like like quick is really blindsided and upset about this. Like he might retire. And like, there was a whole thing. Right. And then fast forward gets flipped to Vegas, wins a cup and factors into winning the cup and then goes to the Rangers, has a good year, gets an extension. So like, it's just interesting to me that, you know, you win a cup and you get an extension like 12 months after threatening to retire because you're on a (laughs) shitty team. (laughs) Dude, That's just amazing. (laughs) Like I did not have that part of the script. That's, yeah, phew. but you love a good feel good story, right? Oh, absolutely. Because there, I mean, dude, there hasn't been as a Sharks fan, not a whole lot to feel good about. So right. you take what you can get, uh, man. So it sounds to me though, like there really isn't much in the way of dark a dark horse. Uh, n- no, I everything I I kind of feel like every every trophy out there, at least the ones that people care about the maybe top two, top three, top five, like I feel like the the top five or top three is pretty universally understood. And then from there, it's like, okay, who, who do you feel more strongly about in a given moment? You know? Absolutely. I think, you know, I think the one that's going to be hardest to handicap might be the Adams. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I mean, but like, who do you even, again, who, who would be like your leader? I mean, are you staring at Vancouver? I was going to say Rick Tockett, I think, is in that conversation. Because, um, like, you want to look at teams. Like, I think you could even say, you know, I, I think we both agreed and kind of understood that the Jets were going to be a good team. But I think after a lot of the dialogue from last year, for them to be as good as they are, I think has turned a lot of heads. I could see Rick Bonus be in that conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I could see, I'm just trying to think, like, you know, there are certain guys like John Cooper. I feel like John Cooper should be in the conversation every year. Um, you know, I could see, I mean, I could, it's, it's so hard to say. Like, That's what I'm saying, dude. It's probably the hardest to handicap. But here's the, th- right. Like, like, um, uh, Paul Maurice in Florida, like the Panthers had those two good seasons and then, you know, two years ago and last year. And then it's like, well, there's no way they're going to top this. And then they have, right. And, you know, I think you could talk about Boston. You could talk about uh, Colorado. You could talk about Edmonton for getting that team out of the dumpster early in the season. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God, you know. See, that's the funny thing is that, you know, as we're here, uh, it, I mean, dude, we're only a week away from April. Right. <laughs> like, oh, my God, it's thankfully almost over, <laughs> at least for the Sharks. I, you know, you kind of forget about like, holy shit, dude. Edmonton was a fucking tire fire there for a while. Like they were brutal. Like they were expected to, I don't want to say take the Pacific in a walk, but there was definitely a lot of talk like this is the year for the Oilers. And then they came out, dude, brutal. So flaccid, dude. All the Viagra in the world wasn't going to help them get it up for whatever reason, man. And then they they well they fired their coach right yeah um our our boy uh, Woodcroft mm-hmm. and and it still took some time before it flipped and I still don't put that on Woodcroft no I don't either I think I think it was just poor timing honestly uh dude Taylor bringing up a great one in the do you remember the Golden Knights having an eleven and zero start. Yeah, Dude. I did forget about that. And they're like a week and a half away from like being outside the wild card. Yeah, imagine like you imagine know, who the, knows? Next... imagine they go on a losing streak this week. Dude, that's what I'm saying. It's like imagine we come on a week from tonight, mm-hmm. and Vegas is outside looking in, and we're going. I mean, hey, that... this is a team that started off 11 and 0. 
I mean, imagine like just think about it for now. Who know who's to say how likely this would be? But imagine like this week they're playing the two teams, but the two teams trying to catch them and the one team they are trying to catch. Like that could be like that's a, a swing that's some on good, like anything we've ever seen. Dude, that's some good script writing. <laughs> right. Dude, love it. Oh man. All right. So at least we have some stuff to look forward to over the next, you know, couple of weeks. And Ian pointing out Edmonton finally getting goaltending. Yeah, I mean, that could That'll be the story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And th- and that could be the story for so many teams. Right. You know, it's like, oh, the goaltender's fine. Because even it feels like even Otter had some stretches this season where it's like, what the hell's wrong with that guy? Yeah, D- I saw it was mentioned in the chat earlier. Like, Dallas is a team that I'm pretty bullish on, but they've kind of had some weird moments too. And it's largely centered around goaltending. Mm. And so, I mean... <laughs> You look at the fact the Sharks scored six on them one game. So I don't know. I, it's it's going to be real. It's going to be real interesting, you know, like especially like with the with the awards specifically, like obviously like I have um, like I have players that I have in mind for these awards that you've mentioned. But the thing is, like if I'm wrong, like so, like I said, for the Hart Trophy, I'm big on Nikita Kucherov. But if Nathan McKinnon ends up winning well deserved and well earned you know yeah and you can't sit there and go robbery right and within reason like i don't think a lot of these awards will have a snub this year i just think the the individual talent in this league is probably the best it's been in a while for sure maybe <laughs> ever sir i disagree there will be people that say matthews got snubbed <laughs> yeah i mean that's but even then like any like you put like obviously like this this current NHL has kind of been the way that it is probably since I would say 2019 or maybe 2020, you know, with the increase in scoring and all that stuff, you take Austin this season that Austin Matthews is having and you drop him into any season from like 1995 to 2020. He's winning the heart trophy unanimously every single one of those years. Yeah. And I think that just speaks to how like awesome the individual skill is right now. Man. Again, it's even though, think. well, I was going to say, even though it's, you know, San Jose has had the season that let's be, let's be honest, jerk, that we said they would have. And I'm not, you know, this is not me trying to yank my own crank going, oh, look at us. We were right. Let me pat myself no, on but, the back. But it, but anybody who didn't know that is. <laughs> yeah. Those are the people I question. <laughs> and there were certainly a couple out there. You know, I was, it's like, what the fuck are these guys smoking? Like, I don't understand it. Um, but I guess, you know, what I'm trying to say is at least as NHL fans, you know, definitely certain storylines, again, I'm going to be paying attention to how Pittsburgh finishes, going to be paying attention to how Vegas finishes a little mm-hmm. bit of horse eye on Jersey, but I feel like that whole thing is kind of fade or complete at this point, barring some miraculous finish. Well, similar Similar to like, like, so like you look at Vegas, right? Like the walls are kind of caving in on them right now with, and there's still runway, but St. Louis, Minnesota getting hot when they have Nashville being hot, you know, the walls are kind of closing in a little bit. And I think you could say the same thing um, in the Eastern conference as well. I mean, like, yes, like Detroit has, it's funny. I think Detroit is like, you'll love this one. I think Detroit is one in 11 or one in 12 since they unveiled their Jersey sponsorship. <laughs> That's so fucking great. <laughs> and uh, so they've tumbled lately, but like the Islanders have been hot. The Capitals, the Crapitals have been hot, you know, <laughs> Tampa Bay. I mean, dude, it wasn't that long ago I was talking to Ryan and I'm like, I think we can move the lightning from Sleeping Giant to frauds. And I, I kind of want to move it back to Sleeping Giant a little bit, you know, like so the East, I mean, I the Western Conference playoff picture is very interesting. I think the Eastern Conference playoff picture is even more interesting, especially like some of these teams like Philadelphia, Detroit, the Islanders, all kind of hanging around, sniffing around. Like I, I know you you made your thoughts on the on a on a play in very clear last week, but I think just objectively with these teams involved, I think a play in would be fun. Oh, it, I'm I didn't say I hated fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, when half the league already makes it, it's enough. In and my, that's in a my fair opinion. point. That's a fair point to make. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, at some point you have to go, what are we doing with the regular season here, guys? 
Right. Um, Unless they make the regular season shorter, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, good luck. Uh, <laughs> dude, respect Chloe. Slowly raising her hand to that judgment of being guilty of what have they been smoking. In other words, Chloe was one of the people that thought, oh, San Jose could might even make the playoffs this year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, though? We appreciate the self-awareness. <laughs> Dude, yeah. It's rare to see that kind of honesty, you know, and admitting like, hey, you know what? On this one, I had um, my hopes were higher. Eh, it happens. Because how many, how many people do you hear like, something will come up and if it's contrary to a point they made they're like ah oh, yeah i knew all along right oh. and so, <laughs> you know yeah i <laughs> more often than i than, than i you know care to see to be quite honest but dude at one point during the 15 16 season like the sharks were at 500 right yeah they were i want to say it was like 16 16 and 1 or 18 18 and 1 it was something like that and and you had some peeps out there they're like, oh fuck, sharks are gonna gonna miss the playoffs for the second time, you know, second, right. you know, second straight season. So yeah, that uh, yeah, it happens. Everybody, if everybody got it right all the time, the city of Vegas wouldn't exist, or or it would. <laughs> there would just be no casinos. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I I am one of those people who benefits on others losing. I'll just put it that way. Hey now. <laughs> uh speaking of losers let's get to our tweet of the week oh gosh <laughs> you like that segue <laughs> right off the top rope kaboom all right dude we love to call out state media and i like seeing it from other people so this headline came from the sf gate uh website this past week so evidently during a warriors game there was some big flare up with Draymond Green, and I know any basketball fan at this point is going, "Can you be sports more specific?" <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, "Can you? Can you? You got a clip?" Like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like isn't that every game? <laughs> uh, but the uh, this this dude Gabe Fernandez stick tap to you, my brother, because he put you know that ESPN. The headline reads ESPN comma NBC Sports Bay Area calls were starkly different for latest Draymond Green flare up. And so if you, you know, there was some sort of shout out for putting latest in the title too, dude, (laughs) but I just love the fact that it, and you can go and read the article, of course, at at your leisure again, sfgate.com. But I just love the fact that it was like NBC sports Bay area. Green does something and ESPN is going, I don't know what the fuck, Draymond Green is doing there like completely in the wrong you can't let that happen emotions you know he we all know this guy runs too hot already he needs to learn discipline and control blah 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 and NBC Sports dude you talk about coming from the top rope is like well people should know you can't get in Green's face because he'll kill you (laughs) or whatever it was but but just 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 just, because something is true it doesn't mean it's okay yeah (laughs) But it was just such, like, just such a ridiculously Homer call. Sure. And, and I get it because, from what I understand, the guy who does the uh, play-by-play for the Warriors, from what I understand, is like, you know, the, has the reputation of being like the biggest bootlicker when it comes to local sports teams. So, I guess you just assume you're going to uh, get like the hometown cooking every single time. But, uh, you know, I go back to Drew Remenda's quote where it's, you know, how how can I have any credibility when I praise them if I can't honestly critique them? So, yeah, yeah this this dude has zero credibility. And and I've even heard this. For, look, I'm not a basketball fan. I'm not a Warriors fan. I don't, You're not. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't hate the Warriors. It's just like. You know, when somebody talks to the and talks about the NBA, I'm just like, okay, explain this to me like I don't give a fuck because I don't. Sure. And but I see, but I you know I catch a little bit of the sports section from time to time, and you know, and it seems like every other week, Draymond Green nearly kills opponent. You know. Well, I so I I think it's been well established. You know, I I've been known to dabble in the sports betting every now and again, and uh, because of that fact, my social media. Uh, algorithm ha- has has adjusted um, and so I see you know there's a there's one person in particular where I see um, you know they'll do TikToks like oh this is my pick 
you know, I'm picking whatever it, this player from this team to do this thing. Right. And then they'll watch the game. And there was one where it was like this one bet this guy did. It was like Draymond Green, like six rebounds or something like that. And he fouled out of the game like in the first quarter. And this guy was like <laughs> this guy was punching the air. Like, <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. And it's like and, and the this guy made the point. He was like, why can you never just play? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and uh, what is this race? Races fan rocks for. <laughs> I thank you guys for watching, but you have to have more pronounceable handles. <laughs> Asking, is he as bad as Jack Edwards? Uh, he, I would call him the NBA version of Jack Edwards, because it's because I mean, boy, that it, it, I don't know that. Jack Edwards, I think, has like buried the bar. Like you've heard of people raising the bar. No, he's. I mean, uh, but I do, I will say though, one of the things that drives me nuts is like, are our keys to the game? Well, let's be honest. It's the same key every game. Score more than the opponent. When? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I hate the whole keys to the, I think it's just manufactured bullshit to put in a pregame. You know, it's like, oh, fuck. Sure. We, we got like two minutes of airtime to like wedge in here. We've got a couple of highlights. So let's make that a, a quote key to the game. It's like, uh, just you know play better than the other team score more points I, I the the only i'm i mostly agree with you i think there there's value in it if you're somebody like um maybe somebody who wants to know more about the hockey itself you know like if you can go out there and you can say well um you know the the sharks uh whatever the 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 sharks are more likely to win uh when they have shots on goal from this area of the ice so why not do that like that's something i think you can have value in mm -hmm. you know what i mean but but, but usually it, it's so broad right but it's the same thing it's like it, it's always i i always make the point right of like oh i really like this player because he works hard and it's like well all, all are, aren't all players supposed to work hard like <laughs> or it's like hey you know he's a real good worker he's on time every day well <laughs> That's kind of all you ask of me, you know? So. Yeah, so, you know, I really like this guy. He does the bare minimum, which is all I'm hoping for. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of like, that That should come without saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Puck guy saying the the announcer that I'm talking about for the Warriors, I guess, was ori was an original Sharks employee. The only reason why I'm not... I, well, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's like, well, I, I guess we know what the Sharks think of him because he doesn't work here anymore. Uh, and the only reason why I'm not naming him, it's not because it's like, oh, why, why can't we name the person or what? It's honestly, it's because I don't know the guy's fucking name. If somebody wants to put it in the chat, I'll say it. I just don't know his name. I think it's Bob something. Uh, I know he had a, a show on KMBR for a while that I never listened to. <laughs> like back in the day, I don't know, 15 years ago before I was, you know, listening to podcasts or anything like that, I would actually listen to sports talk radio around here and there would be uh a show in the uh you know sometimes i'd listen between like 10 and noon or something like that and then this guy had a show between noon and three and it was just fucking wall-to-wall -wall basketball talk now granted the guy's doing color now for the basketball so i get it he's a big basketball guy but i'm like yeah i can't i can't listen to this shit and then I would turn it back on after three. But yeah. So what? So what you're saying? <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong here. Sure. What you're saying is that someone like yourself, who is a hockey podcaster, does not pay attention to basketball. Is that what I'm supposed to understand here? Yeah, that would be. It. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, but I, saying. dude, we pay attention to the Niners. I pay attention to the Giants. It's just you know the NBA just bores me to tears. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ian coming in with his key. Stay out of the box. Okay. Now where's my check? Uh, yeah. Bob Fitzgerald. There it was. Bob Fitzgerald was a ticket sales rep. Then host, him. hosted Sharks pregame on sports channel in 92, 93. Wow. I don't even remember that. Shout out to puck guy. For yeah. That fucking knowledge drop. <laughs> well, I forget, uh, the guy who used to host it on sports channel, he still does like some, like it's not hometown hockey. I forget what it. It's some like Bay Area folk high school sports or so. It's something that like Brody did for like a year and then he moved on to to you know the pros or whatever. This same guy has been at that gig for like thirty five years. 
Good for him. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I hope this guy owns the station at this point. But anyway, there are uh, all these other teams. Let's talk about one more. Okay, I, w- I was shocked to learn that the Barracuda are still playing. I thought they had thrown up the white flag on the season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they did, in fact. It was the uh, the Dogs Day today at Tech CU, and against the Roadrunners, McAniemi threw up a shutout. And I was like, what? Do it for the Dogs, baby. Uh, but if I remember correctly, I think uh, Ian said that like Corona got gassed yesterday, so... Either way, the Barracuda, you talk about, there to me was way, way more like optimism, expectation, excitement around the Barracuda coming into this season. You know, as we were saying earlier about the Sharks, where it was like, no, nah, we kind of knew that this, like this, Sharks are right where they thought, you're right where we thought they would be. The Barracuda are nowhere near where we thought they would be at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I was not expecting. I mean, even last year we weren't expecting to be the Barracuda, the Barracuda to be what they were, and this year was kind of like the re, sort of a revitalization, right? And then, nope, mm. didn't happen. <laughs> Felix saying, I posted a video titled "When Sportscasters Add Nothing of Value." <laughs> <laughs> what is that like? An is that like a uh, hundred and eighty episode documentary? <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, uh, the big thing for the Barracuda this week was the um, addition of Akeem Alou on a, it's a is it a PTO? Uh, yeah, it's a trial. So is this kind of like a mitzvah? What 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 are we trying to accomplish with this? I think I mean it. The, his story has been well documented. Obviously, the blatant discrimination and racism that he's faced that's pushed him out of professional hockey, and so I think it's. It's awesome to kind of get your life back a little bit after something like that. And, you know, I don't really know what will happen if he'll, I mean, if he'll play, if he'll make an impact, who's to say. But I think it's just overall kind of a really exciting thing. And, you know, if it gets him back playing professional hockey, I'm all about it. All righty. Well, I mean, hopefully this uh, works out for all parties involved. I was, to me, I was just, um, based on the feedback that I saw, um, you know, the shit that he's gone through, of course, is horrific and awful, but the people that are just kind of like the, you know, I just want to talk about hockey. I don't want to talk about anything else. They all seem to be kind of like, um, his numbers just statistically not a great player. You know what's okay. But you know, what's really stupid about that argument that people have made lay lay it on me. the, The people who have said, well, I just want to talk about the hockey side of things are the people bringing up all the other stuff. And so it's like, you know, you say you want this, but then you do the other thing. Like, <laughs> like it's it's impossible to not talk about something as notable as as this, right? And so, I I don't know. I just people are always going to find dumb shit to say about things, and I think you should just look at the positive side of it and the optimistic side of it. Is a person who went through hell is getting their life back? There you or go. At least, at least starting to. Well, let's see, uh, Ian, it's just an opportunity of him to play some games to show teams next season that he can or can't still go. Right. I mean, and what the Cuda have nothing to lose. So this, again, this is one of those things that, you know, Hey, maybe everybody is, uh, benefited from this. So, well, n- well, not only that, but I think a key piece of the dialogue that's left out is it's a tryout. And so what do you do on a tryout? You try. <laughs> right? Is that how that works? So like so like you know, there's a lot of people saying like yeah, like he's not very good at hockey. And and maybe that's true, but it's a tryout. Like <laughs> let him try. Yeah. Who it's cares? all good. So um anyway, when it comes to I mean, we're we're so close to the end <laughs> both of this podcast, the season. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> So, uh, as always, follow Teal Town USA, but particularly uh, Sharks Jules, Ian Reed, Kevin Lacey, Marky Mark. They're uh, always available on the Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but they've got some 
always some hot, live, nice takes when it comes to the CUDA and the prospects. So give them a follow if you please. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Ian or some combination therewith is going to have a, another CUDA centric podcast here in the next uh, couple of weeks. So we'll uh, we'll see what what happens there. But I look forward to it. Uh, prize time, buddy. Let's let's whip out some prizes. I've already forgotten what I know. It had something to do with the no. It wasn't Bordelow. That was a week before. It was uh, oh save percentage against San Jose, right? Uh, that is correct. So the combined save percentage of the three teams that the Sharks play uh, played this past week, and so how, how did we do here? Because uh, so Nashville, who was that? Soros. Yeah. So Nashville, the Predators. Uh, UC Soros put up a 900 save percentage. Not great for him. No. Um, but also the Sharks don't take a lot of shots, and two of them went in. So, <laughs> uh, And then against the Tampa Bay Lightning, it was Andre Vasilevsky, who you mentioned, um, put up a 955 save percentage. That's the numbers we're looking for against the Sharks. Yep. And then Peter Morazic for the Blackhawks, despite winning, uh, put up a 867 uh, against the Sharks, <sighs> which... I'll tell you this right now. The winner, and they've already been contacted, and we already have their address. The winner of this week's contest is so glad that Peter Morazic absolutely crapped his pants in this game because <laughs> well, let's. It was the difference in him winning. Oh, nice. But we we have to uh, you know point out that if you if you remember, um, Morazic it you know nearly was killed by Joe Thornton at SAP Center at one point. <laughs> so we just. You know. He's never been the same. Uh, no, never has. Uh, so you take it. So 900 for Soros, 955 for Vasilevsky, 867 for Peter Morazic. Divide you, by three. Yeah, you take the average. And I remember <laughs> fourth grade. Uh, <laughs> you take the average and you end up with 907 save percentage on the week. Here's the interesting thing. Oh, shit. Of the 14 entries, only one of them did not go over 907. So Really? We had a lot of people who were a bit too pessimistic on the Sharks' ability to score goals. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So the winner, and uh, pretty decisively based oh. on these numbers, <laughs> first-time winner, uh, I believe a first-time player as well. I recognize the name, but I haven't seen them. No, not a first-time player, but definitely a first-time winner is oh gosh wow okay it's really good i double checked because i almost butchered this person's freaking name <laughs> apologies in advance <laughs> the winner is aaron bendixson so well, shout out all right first time uh first time winner many time player nice um yeah they played this was their just looking at the a very quick math this was their fourth giveaway they entered this season and it's the first that they won so shout out beautiful uh chloe they, keep, they keep, also said 897 by the way nice chloe keeping me honest uh it wasn't asap it was carolina's arena where Morazic was almost killed by joe thornton well somebody's got to keep you honest yeah no i appreciate that chloe <laughs> uh, shout out. so uh how are we oh i should also uh Damn. note uh note that this week uh i don't know if for those of you who are can you know see me on on the YouTube here, I mm -hmm. have a decent amount of sharks sharks tchotchke behind me. <laughs> you don't say. I don't say. Uh, but I was doing a bit of tidying this week, and I prepackaged some of the prize boxes. I did. I think I pre because I know we got four more of these right after tonight. And so I went out and I got five boxes. <laughs> and, okay. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to prepack all of these now. Just make it real easy for me when I need to ship this shit out. So let's just say as I was tidying and putting these boxes together, maybe a couple other things fell inside the box. Hey, now. So I'm just saying there, there, might, be, there might be a couple Sharks Territory signs that are autographed. Okay. The, the, Autographed the, by you or? <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be autographed by Logan Couture. I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass. But, hey, maybe one is autographed by Jeff VL. 
you know, or somebody like that. Maybe so hopefully, or Matt Nieto or Shimmick or something like that. So sure. any hoodles, uh, just saying, if you're somebody who wins during these remaining shows, as we finish off the season, uh, besides the uprising Jersey, the lunchbox and the hurdle bobblehead, maybe there's something else in there. I'm just saying. There you go. So what are we going to do this week? We have three games versus Dallas at Minnesota at St. Louis. And I mean, dude, we talked about it earlier. I think this is great. Not only are Minnesota and St. Louis nipping at Vegas's heels, they each have a game against St. San Jose this week. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just give them the two points, baby. <laughs> yeah. Now, you talk about you talk about you know knowing the script. <laughs> <sighs> so what 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 are we what are we doing for the three games this week? I'm t- again. I told you, dude, last week, maybe the week before. I've 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 run out of fucking ideas. This is your homework now for the remainder of the uh, season. Oh, <laughs> and and okay. dude, I was gonna go with over under game seven mentions when Pavelski's here on Tuesday. <laughs> Oh gosh! <laughs> now, if we if we really if we really wanted to like stick the knife in and twist it, <laughs> which I love to do some days, and I don't know that this is necessarily a good idea, but it's an idea. Um, <clears throat> how many goals will the Vegas Golden Knights allow this week? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, I love it. I mean, I, we've been discussing their run to the playoffs like all show. Yeah, dude, I love this. But uh, if you want to keep it shark centric, I'm also okay with that. Oh no, 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 no! I love this. I absolutely love this. And uh, I see some shit going on in the uh, Twitter DM. I'm gonna have to get in on this. Um. So yes, that's what we're doing, kids. We're okay. we're we're fucking flipping the script. I love this idea. So uh, if memory serves. Vegas is playing four games this week. Uh, let me see. I'll pull that up for you right now. I want to say it was four games. Watch, we're gonna get completely ratioed by some Golden Knights podcast. We're gonna be, look at these whiny Sharks fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, Sinbin. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So St. Louis, Nashville, Winnipeg, Minnesota. All right. So uh, we're going goal uh, goals allowed by VGK. Closest without going over. Yep. Allowed goals by VGK in four games versus who was that again? Uh sorry. It is St. Louis. St. Louis, Nashville, Winnipeg, Minnesota. Nash. Win and Min. All right. So there you go. That is uh that's how you're gonna enter the, the contest. Uh, this is one of those ones, get it in now, because uh, if memory serves, Vegas' next game is about twenty less than 24 hours from now. Yep, tomorrow at 5 Pacific. Yeah, so get that in before that puck drops between St. Louis and Vegas. And uh, there you go. I love this, by the way. I love this idea. We might have to come up with something else uh, that is um, outside the Sharks. But, you know, if it works, it works. It's fun. Maybe, well, oh. and it's and, and it's relevant because I think a lot of Sharks fans are scoreboard watching Vegas, rightly or wrongly. Yeah, and it, hey, if Hurdle does return before the end of the season, maybe we, you know, shooting percentage, shots on goal, something, something for Hurdle. But anyway, uh, this is how you enter, everybody. You figure out how many goals you think Vegas is going to allow over their next four games, as Jerk mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm just going to confirm on this. Aiden Hill is out, yes? Yeah, so most likely it's going to be a heavy dose of Logan Thompson. All right, then. Although, just looking at it, uh, they will probably, because they've got a back-to-back. So I, if I had to guess, if I was putting my thinking cap on, you're probably going to see Logan Thompson three times, and you'll see Patera either tomorrow or Tuesday. All righty. Um, man, I love this idea. Uh, Chloe, I'm about to let you know. So... You will send your answers to hockeyjerk10 at gmail.com. So shoot him an email, 
Hockey Jerk One Zero. That's all one word. There's no spaces. So Hockey Jerk One Zero at Gmail dot com. Uh, again, answers must be submitted before the puck drops. Uh, is it in St. Louis or in Vegas tomorrow? Uh, it's in St. Louis. Okay, so uh, I should have known that with the five o'clock start. Anyway, <laughs> so that's when you need to have that in. And, uh, of course, we'll announce the winner next week. Remember, if you win but you happen to live outside the U.S. 48, you have to cover the freight if you want the prize pack. If not, we move on to the next closest winner. Uh, I love this. I love this idea. <laughs> it just <laughs> it Because it, let's be honest, but there's not a lot to pay attention to for the Sharks this week. Again, I think, uh, oh, Dude, okay, you know what? We could go real fucking sideways on this, like super deep. Like maybe this is one of the ones where we have to like come up with a super prize pack and it would be like, what number is higher? Goals allowed this week by Vegas, game seven mentions at on Tuesday versus Dallas. Which one do you, from the beginning of pregame all the way to the end of post, including intermissions, all in that stretch. Doesn't matter if it's Brody, Randy, whether it's Hetty or Remenda on the broadcast on Tuesday. Mm. Here's the only problem with that. I will not be tracking that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's something that I would have to track. I, I understand that. But and in and in fact, uh I believe mm, is the Dallas Ari- Dallas Arizona game's already over, yes? Uh yeah, it ended like twenty minutes. Oh. And dust going on there. Okay, so uh, boy, we might have to uh, pa- pack up the uh, podcast now because maybe I need to uh, stand outside a hotel and to get a couple jerseys signed here in about twenty minutes. <laughs> 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 so anyway, uh, yeah, allowed goals by Vegas in four games this week. Email hockeyjerk one zero at gmail with your answers submitted before the uh, St. Louis game. Uh, the bets um, again. W- Dude, I'm holding out hope that they came real close to um, at the Tampa game. Bizarrely enough, I think it was uh, what was it, ten thousand three fifteen. So just three hundred oh three hundred fifty. It, it, oh, there would just been three hundred and sixteen less people. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I have hope. The um, what is it? No, there's a giveaway on that one. I, maybe that Seattle game. Or, dude, Calgary. If I have any hope whatsoever, Calgary, April 9th. Because I don't think there's a giveaway. And it's a Tuesday night. And it's fucking Calgary. Calgary, I mean, I can't even... Do they even have a quote-unquote star player? I know it used to be, you know, everybody... Johnny Hockey! Blah, 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 blah. Uh, they have star players. It's just that they're not playing like star players. <laughs> Nice. I mean, if you really want to boil it down. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, oh, Ruben just joined us, so we have to start from the beginning. All right. So the Sharks <laughs> played three games this week. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, versus Dallas at Minnesota at St. Louis. Uh, God, tertiary road trip. Only two more after that, and it's in that one. It's just at Seattle. So anyway. We're going to close up the books on Twitter. You can follow him at hockey underscore jerk. You can follow me at AJ underscore strong. Uh, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave your take in the comment section of the video if you were not with us live. And you can always help keep us commercial free by using the super chat option during the live shows. Better yet, find us on Venmo at Teal Town USA if you are so inclined. We had a super chat earlier tonight. So Falcon Strike 21, we thank you once again. And... Uh, if you need that 24-7 fix of Sharks Talk, you can hit up the jerk man on the Twitter or X, whatever, at hockey underscore jerk to get your very own VIP invite to the Discord server, which is always popping. And quite uh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so much so. And remember, you can find links to our social media podcast apps and more, almost always included in the show notes. And you can find everything on tealtownusa.com. Make sure that you uh, check out After Dark. It will follow every single Sharks game this week. And so, uh, I mean, this is, a, dude, a, a, a solid 90 minutes, dude. This is a, a rare one for us. 
Yeah, uh, going to be a real interesting next week. Uh, Chris Martin says, be at the game on Tuesday, as will I. So, yes, good luck, everybody involved. <laughs> there you go. Makes me wonder if the Dallas game, since it is, you know, Pavelski, if there will be a little bit higher of a draw than than normal during midweek games that, you know, have teams that are just going to come in and pro- quite probably stomp the Sharks. Could be. Uh, and... Um, Look, I think the good news for for Jerk and I is there, uh, there's only four more of these left, right? Uh, that is sounds right. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yes, four. Even better. <laughs> one of them, I won't be there. So. <laughs> oh, that's right. And so I believe Jerk is dipping out next week. Yes. Uh, that's things are trending that way. All right. So, but have no have no fear. There will be uh an update live in the field. So no need to. <laughs> No need to worry. <laughs> nice. So, all right. It might be a solo show for me next week, and uh, I believe it's Easter next Sunday. Is that a thing that's happening next weekend? That's what I've heard many people are saying. It is. Wow. That. I mean, I'm not really the biggest celebrator of Easter, but that feels early, does it not? Uh, it's usually in April. Somehow we ended up at the end of March. Hmm. I don't know. Figure it out. Somebody, if you know why that is, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> That'll be a, secret, a separate giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, yeah, solo next week, and then uh, the week after that, our last take over the season. But remember, those are good ones because we actually start the show earlier than normal on those. Beautiful. I love it when that time change hits, baby. <laughs> it's the <laughs> fucking best. <laughs> oh, so thank you for spending your Sunday night with us, and we will catch you all next Sunday for another one of these. Now, your moment of zen. Fire everyone. <laughs> <laughs>